He was voted by the Sporting News as one of the top 100 players of the 20th century. A real folk hero in uh, the game of baseball and uh, somebody who is famous, I, I think, uh, beyond the sport uh, for that. Somebody who has had a tremendous career and a tremendous life in baseball. We're very, very privileged to have on the show somebody who, uh, point of personal privilege, at one time pitched for my Cleveland Indians. I speak, of course, of the one and only, the legend, Gaylord Perry, joining us on the program. Gaylord, welcome to the FDH Lounge. Good to have you on tonight, sir. Well, thank you very much. And your Indians are playing great this year, aren't they? Uh, so far, so good. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> doing it with mirrors, I guess. But uh, although, uh, you know, you're, you, from your perch working for the Giants, uh, you saw, I guess, a pretty ugly series over the weekend for the Indians. Uh, well, just a little bit, yeah, but uh, those things happen. You know, you have losing streaks, and you can't understand why. I know the Giants scored like 18 runs today against the Cubs, so those things happen because the Giants don't have that good a hitting club, but they have great pitching, so it's going to be an exciting year. Well, you know what? Let's let's start with the Giants there. Let's start with your work uh, for the Giants. I understand uh, that, uh, and, and this is the case I know where members of the organization will get a World Series ring when a team uh, gets the, gets the job done. But beyond that, your connections to the Giants, the team that you pitched for for just about a decade when you first came up, you were there in 62, uh, your rookie year, the first great heartbreak in San Francisco, losing the World Series uh, to the Yankees. We always hear about this. We always hear about these these veterans that missed out on the chance to get the ring with, with, it, with the team when they were there. And... You know, we heard about that with the Red Sox players, how many of the old players were, were so happy in 2004 when they got it done. Uh, of course, you being involved with the organization gives you special uh, joy here, but just as somebody who was part of that lineage of frustration with the Giants trying to get it done, what did it feel like for you? How great was it last year when they kicked the door in? Well, it was really great. Uh, but, you know, I, when I signed right out of high school, I signed with the Giants, so... I spent 14 years in the organization and got to know everybody like family, and it was just great. And, you know, when I, they called me for the Hall of Fame in 91, they said, what do you want on your plaque? And I said, San Francisco Giants, because I felt like I was always a giant. And uh, So they've asked me to come out a few times, and I always uh, love to do it and have a good time with them. And so um, – and then they retired my number uh, a few years ago, and they kind of made me part of the family again. So it's been just great. That really is uh, tremendous, uh, the kind of organization that they have there and the way that they got it done last year. It, it, it seemed to me from afar like it was kind of a misnomer when people looked at that lineup uh, because they, I think that the lineup got a, got a rap, a, a bad rap as far as being a bunch of stiffs that were carried by the pitching. What it seemed to me it was was guys who maybe were inconsistent over the course of their careers, but if you got the good version of Aubrey Huff, you were in good shape. The same goes for Pat Burrell and everyone else. And I guess to me, the only real surprise is it happened all at once. But if you knew you were going to get the best version out of all of these guys, I don't think it would have been a surprise to anybody, Gaylord. Well, no, but, you know, they, they seem to, if they get one for four, that one hit seemed to, to be the winning hit, uh, especially they won so many games in the bottom of the ninth inning. And uh, they just uh, done great at home, and the fans are at 40,000 every game out there. And, uh, it really lifts them up, and uh, they might not hit 300, but uh, the hits they get are so important, and they, they just score, and they never seem to be out of the game. Uh, if they only a couple runs down in ninth inning, they believe they can do it. It was a heck of a run, and uh, carried by uh, the great starting pitching and uh, the uh, the bullpen as well, uh, and, and as you said, very timely hitting uh, up and down the line. As far as uh, teams you played for uh, that, that had a – a strong run of uh, futility while it was a great chapter of your career being in Cleveland here and winning the Cy Young Award. Uh, we're, we're based out of Cleveland, so that's of particular interest uh, to me. But uh, I, I know that there, there's always a lot of uh, colorful stories that come out of those years, that, that, that crappy, decrepit old stadium. I loved going to games there, but I know a lot of people hated it. When we had Tommy John on the show, we had fun talking to him about that. Uh, do you have any uh, – any special memories about uh, whether having to hang your clothes on a rusty hook in the locker room there or uh, Dorothy Foldheim seeing you coming out of the shower, whatever the case may be? Any colorful Cleveland stories? <laughs> no, you know, the, the Cleveland clubhouse was kind of small and it wasn't too too uh, exciting to go there, but it was it was better than some clubhouse I had on the road. So uh, uh -huh. 
It was. It wasn't the worst. Uh, it surely wasn't. I'd say it was kind of in the middle, and it, it was great when they got a new stadium, and uh, they had some great years there, and they're gonna have some more great years. They got some good young ball players. They got a, a two or three guys that's got some age on them who is their leaders, and uh, I just uh, think it's gonna be an exciting year, and uh, they're not gonna give up. Well, one one of the things in recent years, the last time they made the playoffs, uh, of course, something that got the national spotlight was the game where uh, Carmona and uh, Jabba were pitching when the, the midge attack came in uh, off of Lake Erie. Were, were there any memorable nights like that for you, whether it be the midges or mosquitoes or anything? Nothing like that. We had Tencent Beer Night, if you recall that. <laughs> uh, where, uh, it was Tencent Beer, and everybody came there with $2 in their pockets and drank it up, so... Yeah. It got kind of carried away after about six innings, and uh, that's one game we we were leading that game. We had to forfeit it for uh, because of that. But that, that's the only uh, thing that uh, kind of got a little scary in our, our my time was there. So I was there three and a half years, and had, had some good games, and uh, I had some good teammates. That you no, know, like uh, seventy four was the year that. Uh, you know, I won 15 in a row, but it was the guys that made double plays, guys that got the hit and scored two or three runs in the bottom of the ninth inning to tie it up and give us a chance to win the extra innings. Those things that you got to have, and they're doing that right now, and uh, I think they'll have a great year. Absolutely, and uh, as you referenced with 10 cent beer night, a lot of times the most lethal kind of pests are, are the human ones, even even worse than the mosquitoes. But something that I was uh, a piece of trivia that I couldn't quite believe when I found it out. Maybe it would be easier for you to believe because the next place you pitched after this was Texas, so you got a chance to see what that was like there. I understand they done the 10 cent beer night without any incident down in Texas. There is it is it just a different breed of folks down there where you can ply them with 10 cent beer and not have a riot. <laughs> well, they're used to drinking a lot more. So much hotter down there, and you know, I think I think today was about 107 about it, and so you got to have plenty of fluids and uh, there's a lot of Texas beer down there. So uh, you know, four or five beers don't affect them like it does the people in Cleveland. Well, that's as good of an explanation as any, I think, uh, Gaylord. Uh, the, the one thing, there, there, there's a story that I've seen that's, uh, that's uh, attached to you, and even, even Wikipedia doesn't seem to really uh, know the, the true origins of this, so I hope that you can, uh, I'm sure you can clear this up here tonight. The whole uh, the joke about uh, you won't hit a home run until there's been a man on the moon, of course, you hit an hour, a home run, I guess exactly one hour after a man was on the moon. Was that you that made that joke, or was that your old manager, Alvin Dark, that that, that joked about that well what really happened in, in six to four i was taking ben practice in the old pittsburgh ballpark and and ben practice i hit the ball out uh, very easily and just uh i was a good hitter in ben practice but that's it harry jupiter a san francisco examiner writer said hey alvin this year perry kids went to home runs for you and alvin dark came around and says that would be a man on the moon for that guy hits a home run. And <laughs> the day I was pitching against the Dodgers and Cloud Osteen was their pitcher, uh, we had a moment solid about the third inning that our man had landed on the moon. And uh, within the hour, I, I hit my first home run. True story. That That is unbelievable, uh, Gaylord. That is one of those – those uh, fables that could only come from uh, the world of baseball, uh, it, it seems like. But, uh, you know, your, your career uh, really went along uh, very strongly, uh, of course, becoming uh, one of the, uh, the few members of the 300-win uh, the club. Uh, ultimately, uh, I mean, what would you consider to be your career high, highlight? Was it, was it that moment, uh, joining that select uh, institution, uh, the guys that had won 300 uh, – games uh during during your career on the field before you made the hall of fame what was the thing or or things i guess plural that that jumped out at you the most well i think you gotta have more than one thing uh you know uh pitching a no hitter was very important uh winning the Cy Young in cleveland uh in 72 was very important winning 24 games i you know I, I started 40 games that year and had 40 decisions so what I started, I wanted to finish, and uh, I did. I finished a lot of them, 303 of them. So that shows you that I wanted to stay out there. And then when I saw Young at age 40 in San Diego was uh, very important. And of course, winning the 300 uh, against the Yankees in Seattle was also very important. And all those things uh, got you to the Hall of Fame. Yeah, it was uh, it was a heck of a career. And uh, it, it, again, the uh, the the 
everything that came your way between uh, the Hall of Fame, the uh, the award from uh, the Sporting News as far as uh, being uh, one of the top 100 players of the century, et cetera. Obviously, these were all very uh, well deserved. I mean, when, when I was growing up and watching baseball, you know, you you were definitely right there. You know, one of the name of names of the guys that were out there at the time. Uh, something that I found out subsequently uh, in, in your post-playing career, uh, before kind of re-immersing back into baseball uh, as strongly as you have, I understand that at one point in time you uh, you did, uh, at least according to Wikipedia, if this can be trusted, uh, contemplated a bid for Congress. And I must say also, you're apparently a man after my own heart in that you uh, at one point campaigned for Senator Helms. I once did a term paper on how he got such undeserved bad uh, media uh, back in the day so i was very heartened uh, to see that but what were the thoughts that uh, surrounded your contemplation of a bid for congress well i've, I've been working with some of hamden some of our congressmen some of our politicians in north carolina and i had my home always in north carolina and uh they had been kind of asking me to run for congress and uh so i went to three or four meetings with uh, some people and did some talking i, I always would uh, 10 meetings that just hams couldn't go in and speak for him, but uh, one morning my family called a meet. I have three girls and a boy and my wife, and they said, look, the day you announce you're running for Congress, we leaving you. I picked up the phone and says, I'm not running. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, it was just a family came first. You know what? I, I can I can understand that. I think a lot of people uh, could. Uh, y- y- it does seem like you got to have your head examined to put yourself uh, through the kind of uh, rigors yeah. that are that are out there and the demands uh, both on your time and the things you have to do to conform. So uh, I think a lot of people could uh, understand that decision ultimately. Something that I'd like to ask you about, just philosophically, and kind of kind of get your thoughts. Uh, on the game of baseball uh, with, with your, your very famous uh, book that came out, actually when you were pitching in Cleveland, your, uh, your autobiography, Me and the Spitter, uh, obviously uh, the, uh, the doctored baseballs. I mean, you, you weren't running from the scrutiny by, uh, by naming your book uh, in that manner. I, I'd like to get a sense from you of, of how you kind of slot this in your own head, some, some of the various uh, ethical issues around the game, whether it be anything that's considered on-field cheating of that nature, whether it be the steer- steroid controversies in recent years, whether it be the gambling with Pete Rose. I know that a lot of folks from the Veterans Committee have considered that to be the one unforgivable sin. So as you look at these things, as you kind of slot in your head ethically uh, how these things go from, from you know, not exactly best to worst, but least worst to worst, how, how, does it, how does it come out in your head? Well, I think baseball has some trying times, but I think they handle it pretty well. They they tighten up the rules, and uh, which they should have. And you know, I love seeing Pete Rose play. I, I love his competition against me. Uh, he, he did something that I did not agree with, and a lot of other people didn't. Uh, the store row thing was just part of. It was in football, basketball, baseball, and uh, I was just glad I wasn't a part of that. And and uh, you know, people cork bat, put stuff on the ball, or just trying to get the edge. So. But, uh, you know, baseball is is still very entertaining. And, uh, you know, you love your team you pull for, like you love Cleveland. And uh, they're doing well this year, and that makes you happy. Absolutely, and uh, it, you know you. Uh, mm-hmm. How how much do you do you keep up uh, with your old teams? Because obviously, uh, again, you 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 uh, spent a very uh, key part of your career uh, in in Cleveland. Obviously, you have a super special place in your heart for the Giants, and you're working for them now. But uh, you know, some of these teams, you were kind of just there for a cup of coffee. Seattle, Kansas City. Do do you kind of follow what they're all doing, or or some more than others? Uh, I follow them all. Like I watched the Giants play the Cubs today. I'm watching Philadelphia uh, uh, play with Boston right now. So if Cleveland comes on, I'll watch them with great interest and uh, I'm pulling for them always. Well, and uh, as we said, you got to see uh, both of them uh, this past weekend. And uh, what what a series uh, that was and a, uh, a, an absolutely uh, beautiful ballpark. I, uh, I, I, I have yes. not been out there, uh, Gaylord, but that's on my list of ones that I desperately want to see. I'm fascinated with the engineering of it. I understand that the dugouts are below sea level and they had to build like a, a special bathtub type thing in there to, uh, to keep the water out from the basin. Uh, that ballpark is just unbelievable, isn't it? Well, you know the the investors. I got several investors that come in. They built the they bought the land, built the ballpark, and uh, it's just really kind of a, uh, 
help the downtown the area the ballpark in is built up in nice apartments, nice restaurants and entertainment and uh they they've done a tremendous job by cleaning that area up. So baseball uh, has been good to uh, San Francisco but you know, they had a chance to go to San Jose, but San Jose voted it down. Then they were getting ready to go to Tampa and St. Pete, and uh, McGowan stepped in and said, no, we want to keep our ball club here. And uh, it took them a few years, but they built that ballpark, and it's just been great. It, it has been uh, just really sweet to be able to uh, to watch. As I say, I've only ever seen it on TV, but it, it's, it seems like <laughs> – uh, such an, uh, an incredible uh, marvel. Uh, what what are some of your uh, your, your your key uh, duties and concentrations right now uh, with the organization? How how are you involved uh, specifically uh, with with the Giants uh, in your capacities these days? Well, most of I do is just uh, they, they have me out there four or five times a year just to, for some great events like the last one about two weeks ago was a uh, old timers game uh, stuff like that and. Uh, then I for Wheeler Mays' 80th birthday and stuff like that. Just just some highlights, and uh, we love going out there, and uh, we just enjoy it immensely and uh, look forward to the next trip. Oh, that's living the dream, Gaylord. That's got to be a lot of fun yeah. getting to go to those things. It is.